All right, so um, I'm here today with uh, Max Cavalera from the band Sepultura. Um, so how, are you happy to be uh, playing these these uh, songs again on, on the tour? Because you got, haven't done this these songs in a long time. How are you feeling on this tour right now, Max? Oh, yeah, man, the tour is going great. You know, those um, just a lot of fun playing the, you know, those two records are really uh, important for the metal scene. They're groundbreaking records, and uh, they just get better with the, with time. And, you know, it's like, the more time passes, the the better these albums get. I don't know why, but you have a whole new generation of fans that were not even born when these records come out. They all come into the show, so I see a lot of young young faces in the crowd, and a lot of the older guys like us is still, you know, raging. <laughs> but um, I think it's fantastic to to pay homage to these records in the way that we are doing. Uh, and uh, the the proof is on the reaction of the fans. You know, they are loving this tour. And so it's like, to me, the best feeling is when uh, when the fan, like, come to me and say, ah, this show was, like, amazing, you know, so it's a great feeling. So are you excited for uh, this Saturday? You're going to be playing here at, uh, at the Belasco Theater here in L.A.? Oh, yeah, that's going to be a legendary show, you know, because just, like, uh, a lot of these shows, like, we had one in New York, we had one of these in um, um, Maryland that fast is like kind of like there's something about this this event itself that becomes somewhat magical and special on its own. It's um, you know people have been waiting to hear these songs for a long time and they get a chance to hear with a really killer band. You know we get to, you know like of course me and Eagle, but you got Mike playing bass and got Dan playing guitar and then it's killing every night and it's, uh, it's a great feeling and I think we, we deliver we, we make uh, we make justice to this record we play them you know the way they're supposed to sound all right what do you like most about about playing live most of it's a, it's a combination of the energy and the, just the pure adrenaline that you get from a live show that you don't get any of that anywhere else, man. It's kind of, it's like, it's like a drug, actually. You know, it's like really kind of a crazy effect that has on you. It's like, you get the goosebumps and, and just to me, just to see the impact that this music has on the people, it's quite amazing. You know, some of them, uh, it, it's it's almost like a, it becomes a bit like a religious experience, actually. It's fucking crazy. Like, some of the stuff is like so intense and, and, you can see it in people's eyes and the way they're singing the, the lyrics and and uh, you know those those lyrics also, also they have age good man because the world is just going more fucked up as we get older so stuff I wrote to 30 years ago about technology and diseases and war still going on right now even probably more now than even when we first wrote it all right, so why did you start playing guitar, and, and, and why did you become a singer, too? Why, why did you start, you know, why did you play guitar? Well, originally I wanted, I like drums, you know, I'm, but, uh, you know, my brother got got that faster and was better than me, and I kind of got involved with guitar, and my dad had an acoustic guitar laying around. I started messing with that, and I really loved it, and, you know, with the, within the time, I realized I was really good at creating riffs. I could really express my a lot of my feelings through the riffs, and I started making some really cool riffs. And that started in the early, you know, first record, Best of Devastation. And I never stopped. You know, I, I really love making riffs. It's actually one of my favorite things is, is just creating riffs because I think that's a bit of my speciality. You know, I don't do solos, so... I'm really just based on rhythm. So I'm a purist rhythm guitar player uh, to the purest form of rhythm player. And I really, there's an art form for that. I think it doesn't get too much validation, doesn't get too much credit because a lot of people talk about the solos, but I think there's a huge art form on creating riffs itself, like riffs that sticks in people's mind, you know, like those really killer riffs that come Sometimes they come and they, you just know it's going to be a great one. And uh, I had a lot of them and I have a lot more of them to come. You know, uh, I'm always jamming with my guitar at home. 
I really love playing, making riffs. It's one of my favorite things. And uh, who who influenced you as a singer? How how did you who influenced you the most? You know, to get your vocal style as a singer. Early stuff, maybe my main influence would be Tom Warrior. One of my main influences. I just got to hang out with Tom at the Maryland Death Fest, and that was great. Um, I think the first, very, very first influence is, of course, Lame from Motorhead, because kind of Lame show us the way that you don't need to sing pretty to be a badass. You can actually just kind of scream with a little bit of melody in your voice. And I, I have a little bit of, of melody on my voice. You know, it's not just growling. But uh, I think it's a combination of, 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 of Lemmy and a little bit of Tom Warrior, a little bit of Venom. Those are like the early influences. And and then you find your own voice, you know, that's the cool thing. I think inspired by those guys, I kind of found my, my own style, my own voice, and I stick with it. I never got like vocal lessons or tried to sing properly because I think that would ruin it. If something is good, don't mess with it. That's that's always been my my ideology, you know. So this is working. I don't want to know why it works. I don't want to. I don't care about the technical terms, and I don't care about why it works like that. I just know it, it's it works and it does its thing, and I just kind of happy that I get to do what I do the way I do it, and it's like. It's been going on for more than thirty-five years, and so it's pretty amazing. What what bands got you into metal? Well, the early stuff, of course, was like um, I was a big into Kiss and Van Halen, and uh, I think the early Accept, and then of course it got heavier with time. Then we found Motorhead, you know. Before that, of course, Black Sabbath, but. I think once we found Motorhead, it kind of opened the door to like Slayer and Metallica and Death Metal itself, you know, Morbid Angel, Death, and all the other heavier stuff. Um, so I, I love all those bands. I also like a lot of punk too. And uh, me and Igor always look up to punk bands like Discharge and Black Flag, Dead Kennedys. I like the speed and the uh, the raw adrenaline raw energy of punk so i think the combination of metal and punk is an amazing one all right let's talk a little about the the album beneath the remains how was it like uh recording um you know this album you know you worked with scott burns how, how was that different than the previous albums yeah that was cool it was um it was done in brazil and it was recorded at night it was actually a nocturnal recording and we never done one of those before so it was for, like kind of like first time type thing, but Scott was great. It was, a, it, was a, it was really cool having a producer, a real producer for the first time. and Somebody that understood this music, you know, he understands double bass. He understands, you know, heavy guitars and the way we, the aggression that has to come through, through the speakers with this music, the way to properly record this music. A lot of guys before that did not know what to do with this music, you know, so, um, we learn a lot from working with Scott. And I think to, still today, it's one of the most rawest records capture performance, I think, is, uh, it was, was captured on that record. You know, maybe because it was nighttime, I don't know, but there's a sense of desperation and a sense of urgency on that record that I don't find in any other uh, record that I made. And so it's like quite a unique recording. And uh, how did the collaboration happen with uh, John Tardy on Stronger Than Hate? So, yeah, man, John's a great guy. He's a friend of ours. We were all, you know, recording at Morris Sound, and they were from Tampa, and they were all friends with, with Scott. And uh, Scott had worked with, you know, Executioner and and uh, knew all the Tardy brothers. And, um, you know... We just kind of got together and uh, invited them. It was kind of uh, both records that we did. Beneath the Remains was more like the vocals. So John was like, uh, uh, it's kind of funny because he's also in the new Soulfly record, Totem, you know, which is cool, like 30 years later. 
and uh, we we got your jam again together, which is amazing, and it's a it's a living proof of of um, you know the statement of this music. You know, it's still strong today as it was back in the day. But uh, John's a great guy, man. I think he's one of the innovators of death metal, and uh, I love his vocal style. I love his attitude and uh, his energy, and uh, I was so proud to. It was cool working with him on Stronger Than Hate, and it's even cooler working with him on the new Soulfly. Was this the first time you're working with John since uh, Beneath the Remains on the new Soulfly? Yeah, on a real on a real record. Yeah, you know we did some um, we did some touring together. We did the SOS tour, Sepultura uh, Obituary Sados, but we 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 cross pets in festivals and stuff like that in Europe, but. Working together, uh, scouring the vial is the first time. It's actually a real collaboration, just me and him singing together, you know, which is great. Great, great. All right, so how was it like playing at, um, uh, you know, how, let's move forward to the, the Arise album. Of course, this was recorded at Morris Sound. Um, how was that different, you know, going to Morris Sound for the Arise album? Well, I think uh, the way I look at those two records, I think Believe the Remains is the rawest one. It's more desperate. I think Arise is beneath the remains 2.0. You know, it's 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 kind of like sharper. We became better at playing our instruments. I think the songwriting got better. I was a, I got to become a better songwriter myself. I started writing really more intricate riffs like the Arise riff and Dead Embryonic Cells and uh, Desperate Cry. And uh, but I I like all the I also like all the hidden gems, you know, the stuff that people don't talk about, uh, stuff like subtraction and infected voice and really kind of obscure kind of songs that most people kind of forget. That's the cool thing about metal. Uh, it's not only the hit songs, you know, it's the whole experience. People love metal records. They love all the all the songs. Um, sometimes the, the, the songs that people like the most are the obscure ones that nobody even talk about it. And that's what makes it makes it fun to make metal records because you you create a, a whole album. You're making you're making an album. You're not just making hit songs like like pop bands. Because of that, it's more it's more interesting and more fun to make records because sometimes the 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 real jams are in the obscure songs. Um, but yeah, I think Arise is a more defined version of. Uh, refined version of Beneath the Remains. Talking about obscure songs, uh, the song Under Siege, I asked your brother how many time signature changes are in that song. Do you remember um, on Under Siege how many time signature changes? Do I remember what? How many uh, time signature changes? Your brother couldn't oh, remember. Yeah. Uh, do you remember? We were in, yeah, we were really into that. You know, it was. I think that comes from listening to stuff like Merciful Fate. I think that's kind of shows that you can have a lot of different riffs in the same song. Sometimes one of the cool things I like to do, I still do that today even with Soulfly, is you grab a riff and you do the riff and then you do it again uh, a little bit later, but you slightly modify the riff. So it's slightly the same riff, but a little bit different with a couple, one or two different notes added to it. But that way it makes it more special the second time around. Um, as far as the, like, we never really learn read music. So I, I totally illiterate as far as reading music. I don't know any of the, 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 you know, the technical stuff. I wouldn't be able to tell you, not even the name of the strings. <laughs> uh, but I think that's what makes it cool because it's so primitive and so kind of caveman. When we create those time signatures, they, they come from a very... Um, they come from a very pure place, you know. It's, it's it's coming straight out of your wild imagination, and is and you're not following any books or any theories or any how to do. You just jam it, you know, and you're just creating stuff. And a lot of those were created like that. Uh, you know, one of my favorite songs from back in the days, uh, uh, Inquisition Symphony, which is instrumental, and it's just a collection of riffs. It was just like just putting a bunch of riffs and like building a pyramid of riffs, you know, it's a lot of fun. 
Yeah, you were mentioning at the beginning of the show, there's people that go to their shows. Like, in my case, I'm only 26. So a lot of these albums came out before I was born. What do you think of fans my age, you know, that are that are coming out, that we're keeping metal alive? What do you have to say about that? I think it's awesome. I love, you know, I, you know what? The, the, the one, the, the coolest thing about it is the appreciation. How much they, the young kids appreciate those records. Uh, almost like they appreciate even more than the older guys. I don't know why. I think... Maybe because, maybe because they were not there when that was created. That's even a higher passion for it than the people that were there. Um, I cannot. Ex- I don't know how to explain, but I feel that some young kids that had come to this show, they know every word, man. They know, <laughs> you know. I'm singing with them every single word. It's it's fantastic. It's amazing, and it's it's a it's to me it's a proof that this music will carry on. Will keep going. For generations to come, you know, the, the, you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now, people still be jamming this stuff and it still be great. Any advice for uh, young musicians out there? Man, I think most of it is just kind of like just follow your 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 heart, man. You know, like do it for the love of the metal. Like, don't get into for because you're going to make money or that, all that shit. Cause if you, if you go with that kind of mentality, that's going to be rough and you might be disillusioned because it takes a while to get it established. You know, a lot of times it takes a long time to get, but if you believe in something, you, you, you stick with it, man, you know, eventually things will work it out. And you have to like, you have to do things other people don't want to do the kind of sacrifices, you know, uh, that's just part of it. It's part of it. Part of being in a metal band, you have to, to sacrifice things, and you know. But you be also reap the benefits of that. You know, that's a lot of great. The seeds of, of your work. There's a lot of great stuff that comes with this. I wouldn't trade this. Uh, the journey I had for nothing. I think it's been amazing. I learned so. I like seeing the world with with playing metal. I learned more with metal than I would have learned in school, and uh, so I think the best uh, I can best advice I can give to somebody I was, you know, young there with a guitar is just keep jamming, keep keep at it, and uh, eventually things will come, come happen, you know? All right, and then after this tour is up, uh, is the Soulfly going to be touring later this year? I hope so, man. We have a, the records coming out August. Um, there's, uh, there's some things being uh, booked right now, but I'm not sure, but for sure. Definitely keep an eye Definitely, we're gonna tour later the year or next year. But I'm very excited for the the release of Totem in August. Where the feedback has been amazing on these two songs so far. Nothing but great stuff from people, and I think people are gonna be pretty surprised with the rest of the record. All right, I asked your brother about this too. Uh, what are you thinking? What's your thoughts on Palmeiras? You know, they won back to back Copa Libertadores. You you see another uh, championship this year for Palmeiras? Of course. <laughs> Although I don't, I don't follow as much uh, uh, as I wanted to. I became more Americanized here in the city, so I, I like foot, American football. Detroit Lions fan, but yeah, I love Palmeiras. I my my mom is a Palmeiras fan. My brother is Palmeiras, and we will make it to the Libertadores for the third time, and that's going to be an amazing feat. All right. All right, I want to thank you again for uh, taking this interview, Max. It was an honor to speak with a legend today uh, Today on the show for KQBH 101.5 FM. Uh, this is Mike Nelson here. Uh, thanks a lot, Max. All right, man. Keep it metal, brother. Thanks Take a lot, care. man. Appreciate it. All right.